Welcome to this short video, the basics of USDA's Livestock Risk Protection Program, often called LRP. In this short video, we'll review the basics of how LRP operates and help you understand some of the key terminology you need to understand in the basic operation of the program. We're going to run through some examples to help you understand that. So when we start with, we have to appreciate what LRP is meant for. It's meant to protect livestock producers, cattle and swine producers against unexpected market declines which impact their bottom line. Basically, it's meant to protect against the market falling at the period of time when they care about the market falling because it's probably when they're marketing their livestock. So the first step when we think of how to successfully utilize LRP is simple. It's what kind of livestock are you going to be insuring? And unless you're in the city, you can probably figure this out pretty easily. Are you insuring cattle? Are you insuring swine? Uh, in this case, if you're insuring swine, it's very simple. There's really only two categories you have to worry about. And frankly, the program works the same for both of them. That would be unborn and born swine. Uh, the reason they have unborn is simply because one of the great changes they've made the program is you can insure unborn livestock uh, if, you, if, you own, if you own sows or uh, pregnant cows. On the cattle side, it's simple, but it's, there's a few more things to discover. First of all, they're trying to make sure that the price you receive from LRP is correlated with actual market conditions. And the market's different, uh, depending on the weight of the livestock that you're going to be insuring. So if you're insuring between 1,400 and 1,000 pounds, uh, that's one category called fed cattle. If you're insuring anything below 900 pounds, that category is called feeder cattle. And if you're insuring between 100 to 600 pounds, that's just a, a, a one, the, the lower weight of feeders. And then six to 900 is a separate weight. Then we're, we're further going to break them down between steers and heifers. And even a few breeds such as Brahmin uh, and dairy cattle will be in their own category. The goal of all this is simply to make sure that the prices align uh, as closely as they can with actual market conditions. Okay, so once we've figured out what livestock we want to insure, then we need to look at timeline. The goal of picking the right time of our insurance product is to make sure that LRP pays us when we need it to. So this is actually relatively simple, especially if you're somebody who receives the price for your livestock the day they're loaded in a truck. Uh, that would be the, the date that we care about. Where it's a little more complex is if, if you're one of those who perhaps locks in a price, maybe on an online auction or something like that. Uh, let's just use an example in the middle of the summer. Well, let's just say for cattle, uh, you, you typically sell in July or August on an online auction. Uh, then you hold those cattle, uh, perhaps on grass, and load them on a truck in August, September, October, November. So you kind of have two timelines to think about. What we want to do is align LRP, the ending date of our LRP contract, because that's what really matters for purposes of LRP, with when we set a price for our livestock. So if we're one who typically sets a price in an auction around August, we probably want our LRP ending date to be aligned with that period of time. One of the great websites that are out there uh, to help you understand LRP, uh, in fact, by far the best website out there is called Life lrpcalculator.com. So on lrpcalculator.com, it's going to break down the cost of utilizing LRP and all the different numbers we need to know to utilize it in a very user-friendly fashion. So let's walk through an example here. When you get to LRP Calculator, the first thing you have to do is pick your livestock. In this case, let's run an example based upon a, a 500 pound steer. So we hit the, 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 the cattle, uh, now we do a drop down box and we're going to do a steer weight one. That's just a 500 pound steer. Uh, once we do that, uh, what you can see on this web page now are all the different options that LRP offers. And we're looking at uh, March 15th right here. You can see at the top is the nearest term LRP contract is 13 weeks out. And it's always 13 weeks out. Then you can see 17. 21 and so on. LRP can be offered from 13 weeks out to 52 weeks. At times that 52 week and some of those uh, about a year out, sometimes there aren't that many options to purchase LRP a complete year in advance, uh, but sometimes there are. 
In this example, let's really dig in the nuts and bolts here. Let's look at a 21 week endorsement. And let me just kind of explain what some of these numbers mean. So this is what we could have purchased on March 15th. This is a 21 week endorsement. That means that this LRP contract expires 21 weeks from the day we lock it in. In this case, uh, it would be August 9th, 2021. Somebody would want to consider this contract if, if perhaps you're selling in late July or early to mid-August. That would probably be the LRP contract that most closely aligns with uh, when you're selling your livestock. Another number here to look at is the expected ending price. Uh, USJ probably calls this the expected ending value. All it is, is it is an attempt to, to estimate what the price of a 500 pound steer will be based upon the futures market in uh, on August 9th uh, of 2021. You can see it's 173.32. At least it was on, on March 15th. Uh, if you go across there, now you see coverage level. Coverage level is simply a percent of the expected ending price, expected ending value that you can lock in. USGA, you can see, offers many options. Uh, today, they're, on March 15th, they're gonna offer 10 different options from the high, a higher level down to a lower level. Then if you go across there, you can kind of see uh, the 171.30, that's a coverage level, uh, sorry, a coverage price. The coverage price is nothing more than multiplying the coverage level by the expected ending price. And then you go one, one over to the right, you can kind of see the, the cost, which is $4.34 per hundredweight. And you can kind of see if you take a look at this, uh, the information here, the highest level of coverage is always on the top, and then each one going down is a lower level of coverage. Now, the first thing that people have, the first question that people have for me when they look at this is, well, should I be a, buying a higher level of coverage or a lower level? What's the better deal? And one of the unique things that we do uh, for our clients is we break that down. We have some great data that shows historically how the higher levels would have compared the lower levels and we'd love to break that down. This little graph right here is just kind of a little, uh, a little example of some of the information that we provide, kind of demonstrating uh, that green is, is kind of the net indemnity over time. Uh, it's just showing you that it typically, at least in this example, you would have been better to purchase kind of on the, the higher level of coverage than the lower level of coverage. But call us if you want us to provide you some analysis uh, that helps you make an educated decision. Okay, so we purchase a coverage on, on whatever day we do it. LRP has new options that come out every single day, uh, most days anyway, uh, when the market closes. So if the market goes up, people are often calling to, to purchase LRP, and if it goes down, they're, they're hoping it goes up the next day so they can call then. But let's just do a few scenarios. Uh, let's just pretend that we buy the highest level of coverage, which was a 98.83% coverage level. That means our coverage price, and you can think of your coverage price as a price floor, is 171.30 and it, we, it cost us $4.34 uh, per hundredweight. So for a five weight, we're, we're gonna have a cost, uh, USJ calls that a premium, of roughly $22, $23. Okay, so here we are now in August. It's August 9th. We want to know if our LRP endorsement paid us anything. Uh, if the market goes up, it doesn't pay anything. LRP only pays when the market drops. So in this example, let's use some round numbers. Let's say it dropped uh, $10 per hundredweight. It dropped from 171.30 down to 161.30. Our payment, our indemnity, will be $10 per hundredweight if that were to happen. And we take that $10 times a five weight, 500 pounds, the indemnity per head would be $50. And you can kind of extrapolate that out for a herd if you had done 100, uh, et cetera. And so that's kind of how LRP works. Now your cost is going to be due after your coverage ends. Basically, in this example, it would be you'd get a bill from the insurance company roughly September 1st. It's a month after your contract ends, and this contract ends August 9th. Okay, now let's switch gears and do the exact same type of analysis, only for swine. I'm looking now at a 13-week endorsement. This is what would have been available on March 12th, 2021. Just reviewing the numbers, the expected ending price, Expended, expected ending value at that point in time was $99 per hundredweight. Uh, the highest level of coverage is 98.99% of that, which is great because it makes a, a simple number of a $98 uh, 
coverage price, or if you want to think of that as kind of your floor price. Anytime the market falls below that uh, on the end date of the contract, you're going to get paid. So again, if we get uh, the end date, which is I think uh, uh, May, I'm sorry, June 11th probably for this one, uh, what you can see is that if the market were to be below $98, it's going to pay. If it's $98 or above, you're not going to receive any indemnity, which is a payment from LRP. But let's just say it falls to $88, uh, $10 per hundredweight. We're going to get paid $10 per hundredweight. Now in this example, let's again use some round numbers. Uh, for, for Swine LRP, uh, they're going off the 74% the, 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 the factor, which for, for swine producers is something you're well aware of. Uh, so in this case, let's just say uh, the, the we insured a, a 200 pound uh, animal. Uh, we would multiply the, the two times $10 per hundred weight, which is a drop, so $20 indemnity. And the cost in this example is $3.97. So that's kind of how LRP works. In the next video, we're gonna go over some of the key rules. Uh, before you sign up for LRP, you really wanna know the rules. Uh, when we work with clients, one of our goals is to avoid surprises. Nobody wants surprises when you're purchasing insurance. Uh, so you're going to want to watch that next video. We're going to go over some of the key rules you need to know about. In another video, we're going to cover how to sign up and some of the, the tips that we've learned that help people become a, a successful with LRP will also be covered. If you found this video useful, uh, please subscribe. In addition, if you have any questions uh, that we can answer, feel free to call us with the number on the screen or you can also write in the comment section and we'll attempt to address uh, those questions in subsequent videos. Appreciate you taking time to learn about LRP. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to call. We'd love to answer them and help you out. Thanks a lot.